Have you ever drafted an email and completely forget to send it? Use Power Automate to create a flow that will notify you via Teams if you have an email draft sitting in your drafts folder for more than an hour. If you want to learn how to build this flow, keep watching. We'll start off by creating a scheduled cloud flow. Give your flow a name so that you can find it later. I'll set this flow to start running today, and it will run every hour. I'm going to start off by initializing four variables. I'll rename my variables as I go to keep things organized. The first variable will hold the current time. This will be an integer variable, and we'll set that to zero. Next, we'll need two variables for the draft time. The first one will be a string variable that will hold the time the draft was received in the drafts folder. Next, we'll create an integer variable that will hold the value of the draft time. And we'll also set that to zero. The last variable will hold the result of the time difference calculation. That'll also be an integer variable, which we'll set to zero. In Power Automate, the ticks expression will take a date and calculate the number of ticks for that date. One tick is 100 nanoseconds. We'll set the current time variable using the ticks expression. Insert UTC now. Next, we're going to add a get emails action. We only want this flow to check the drafts folder. And we'll change the fetch only unread messages from yes to no. If you'd like to limit the amount of drafts this flow runs for, you can change that number here. I'm going to leave it as a default for now. Next, we'll add an apply to each action that'll loop through all the drafts. First, we're going to set the draft receive variable. Search for receive time. Next, we're going to set the draft time variable. We'll use a ticks expression. Click on dynamic content and insert the draft receive variable into the ticks expression. Next, we're going to set the time difference variable. We'll use the sub expression to subtract the current time variable from the draft time variable. Insert the current time variable first, a comma, then the draft time variable. We'll wrap that in a div expression to divide the result by 600 million. This will return the total number in minutes. Next, add a condition to check and see if the duration of the draft is greater than 60 minutes. Insert the time difference variable and select greater than. You can customize the duration to suit your needs. Remember that the time difference variable stores the difference in minutes. I'm going to add a compose action to hold the draft duration and minutes text. I'll insert the difference variable, a space, and type in minutes. Next, search for the post message action. We're going to post as a flowbot, and we're going to post in a chat with the flowbot. Insert your email address here, and compose your message. The reason we created the compose action above is because the variable for the time difference isn't available in the dynamic content options to insert into the chat message. However, the compose action we created is Insert the compose action into the chat message. I'm going to click this button to switch to code view and wrap the duration in a strong tag to bold the text. In Outlook, I do have an email draft that has been sitting in the drafts folder for over an hour. Let's test out the flow. In Teams, you can see that a message from the Flowbot has been posted. If you'd like to learn how to create an adaptive card message that includes the recipient, subject line, and a preview of the message, keep watching. First, visit the Adaptive Card Designer. Link is included in the description box below. Here, I'm going to customize how I'd like my card to look. First, I'm going to change the target version from 1.5 to 1.3. I'm going to increase the size of the title, and remove the column set, fact set, and the two buttons. Replace the text here with some placeholder text. 
Double click column set in the sidebar to insert it into your adaptive card. Click this button twice to add two columns to your card. I'm going to add a text block and I'm going to click and drag it into the first column. I'll add another text block and I'll click and drag it into the second column. I'm going to set the width of the first column to 120 pixels. I'll bold the text for the first column and leave the second column as is. I'm going to insert a label and placeholder text for the recipient. I'll repeat this two more times for the subject line and message preview. I'm going to take the code from the card payload editor and copy it. I'm going to edit my current flow by removing the post message action and replacing it with the post adaptive card action. We're going to post it as the Flowbot in the chat with the Flowbot. Insert your email address and paste the JSON you copied from the Adaptive Card Designer here. Instead of inserting all the content into the Adaptive Card action, I'll use a few additional Compose actions to keep things organized and make it easier to edit rather than having to mess around with the JSON. First, I'm going to adjust the Draft Duration action, and this will hold the card content instead. Next, I'm going to add a Compose action for the card title. Next, I'll need to add a variable that'll hold the body preview of the email draft. First, I'll need to initialize the variable at the top level. This will be a string variable. We'll set the variable here. Search for body preview. I'm going to use a compose action to get the length of the body preview. For that, we'll use the length expression and we'll insert the preview variable here. Next, we'll use a condition to check if the length is greater than 140 characters. We'll insert the compose action here, select greater or equal to and I'm going to enter 140. However, you can change this value to suit your needs. If the preview message length is greater than 140 characters, we're going to trim that down. For that, we're going to need a compose action. We're going to use the substring expression, and we're going to insert the variable here. Enter 0 for the start of the string, and we're going to cap that at 140 characters. You can also add an ellipsis to the trimmed message. Next, add a set variable action. Grab the compose action from above and insert it into the variable. Now it's time to insert all our variables or compose actions. Insert the card title compose action here. Our card body will go here. Search for recipient and enter it here. And our email subject line will go here. For the message preview, we're going to insert the variable here. Okay, our flow is ready to be tested. Here's our adaptive card message. You can customize this to display more or less fields. Do you want to build a flow that will automatically download email attachments to your OneDrive? Watch this video.